factoring and solving. First of all, to factor something means to write a number or an equation and its factors. For instance, if you have six, it can be factored into two times three. And you can write that like this, two times three. That's what it's called a factor. To solve for something means you want an answer. You're trying to find what number of x makes this statement, 3x squared plus 13x equal to 10. So what value of x makes this statement true? But before you get there, you've got to get x by itself. And right now, x is all mucked up in this quadratic equation. So before we get x by itself, we have to do a few things. So first of all, we are going to subtract 10 from both sides. Because I see a square, so I'm going to use my box. But first, I've got to get this quadratic into standard form. So I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. And that gives me 3x squared plus 13x. I can't add these together because one has an x and one doesn't minus 10 equals zero. Now I have a nice quadratic all together and then I can use the box to factor it. So this is also a mini lesson on factoring. So right now we are gonna put the three X squared, the first number in the first box and the negative 10 in the last box. So I'm gonna put a 10 here and I'm gonna make the negative red just so we don't forget it's there because this is the hardest part on a question like this. So we are factoring. So that means we're going to look at what two factors make 3x squared. Well, that is 3x times x. Because 3x times x, you are multiplying these two things together, make 3x squared. So I know in Algebra 1, a lot of you did the what multiplies to 10 and makes 13. And you're like, wait, 10, we have 2 and 5, and we have 1 and 10 none of those make 13 and you get confused. Well, there is a way you can do that. You also have to incorporate the three, but I found for many of you that's very complicated and we forget this procedure. So instead, we're gonna keep doing what we did before. So recall, we had three X squared, so we said it's three X times X. Now we're gonna look at negative 10 because there are already things inside the box we can use. So let's try these factors first, two and five. So we're going to put 2 here and 5 here. And don't worry about the positives and negative signs yet. We can do that later. Again, we are multiplying the 3 by the 5. So that's what goes inside this box. So 3 times 5 is 15x, 3x times 5. And now x times 2 give us 2x. So what we've actually made here is we have made 15x and 2x. These are the middle terms. And the middle of the box should make the middle term. Oh, look, plus 13. We need a positive 13x. And this indeed works. So 15x minus 2x give us 13x. That means this has got to be a negative 2. And this is when you can find the signs. Since both of these terms are negative, this has to be a negative 2. And since this term is a positive. This is going to be a positive 5 times a negative 2, and that will give us negative 10. So once we've written the box, we can write these as factors. 3x minus 2 times x plus 5, and remember, equals 0. So this equation and this equation are the same exact thing. It's just rewritten. This is standard form, and this is factored form. So we're trying to find out what x equals. So now, since we have it equal to zero, we've got to see what value of x will make this statement true. This one is easy, this one's a little harder. What we're gonna use is called the zero product property, which means, product means multiply, which basically says if you multiply zero times anything, you get zero. So if you zero times 2x plus 5y plus 10, you're going to get zero. If you multiply zero by anything, you get zero, and that's the zero product property. So we're going to split these two terms up.
because there are two terms. Factory means they're multiplied together, like two times three was six, right? So these are multiplied together. So if either one of these terms is zero, then the whole thing is going to be zero and your equation is true. So 3x, we're going to add 2 to both sides, equals 2. And then we're going to divide by 3. So x equals 2 thirds. And this, we're going to subtract 5 from both sides. And x equals negative 5. So now we have two answers. And I'm going to write them over here. x equals 2 thirds and negative 5. And I'm like, yay, there are my two answers. And it should have two answers. Because don't forget, a parabola crosses the x-axis not always twice, sometimes not even once. But in this case, it crosses it twice at negative 5 and 2 thirds. So it's a parabola, so it, it definitely can cross it twice, and it has. That's why sometimes you have two answers when you have a square.